Some Adam and Eve jokes. More Adam and Eve jokes. Don't forget to comment on which joke you like the best. And let's see. Sunday school teacher, can anyone tell me the story of Adam and Eve? Abby responds, first God created Adam. Then he looked at him and said, I think I can do better if I try it again. So he created Eve. Adam and Eve were walking along the seashore arm in arm. Adam looked poetically out to the sea and eloquently cried out, Roll on, thou deep and dark blue ocean, roll. Eve gazed at the water for a moment, then in hushed tones gasped, Adam, oh Adam, you wonderful man, it's doing it. All right. Good morning, friends. This is the Gospel of Joy. I am the Reverend Josh Knappenberger, the pastor of laughter, the cleric of comedy, and it is a blessing to be here with you today. This is our 150th live stream. And so, if it's if you've been with us for 150 live streams, I hope you get enough laughs to make you want to come back tomorrow, but even if you don't, I hope to give you enough laughs to get through today. So, happy 150th to us. Uh, we're really getting up there in the <laughs> in the uh, in the numbers. Uh, so I'm I'm glad to do it. Um, okay. So you can check the YouTube channel, uh, St. James UCC Allentown. I will post this morning's video later today. And don't forget to comment, like, and share this video as well as tag your friends. And also don't forget to, uh, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to like, share, and comment, but also subscribe to the channel so that you can get our videos whenever they're, whenever they're posted. We try to do these things to get these videos out to as many people as possible because joy and laughter doesn't do much good if it doesn't go anywhere. So we try and get as much joy and laughter out to you as possible. In front of St. James, UCC on 15th Street in Allentown, we have our Children's Lending Library Book Box Ministry. And it is meant to be an exchange. So if you take a book, try and leave a book. It is the ministry we do to the community, and we are glad to do it. All right, I got my buddies with me today. We have my buddy and his buddies, not just his buddies. If you've been with us the last couple of days, you, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. Just to recap, this is Ravage. I'll hold him like this. He's Ravage. He's a mechanical dog, a robot dog, and... Um, he got his mouth open today, and his guns are pointed on his side, so he's shooting, and that's Ravage. And yesterday I showed you Laserbeak. This is Laserbeak. His wings are outspread, so you can see how big he is. And today, we see the guy who gives them orders. This is Soundwave as he appeared in Transformers Dark of the Moon. He is a Mercedes sports car. And he's got his gun there. And he is extremely movie accurate. This is exactly as he looked in the movie. Some of the movie toys don't necessarily look exactly exactly like they did in the movies, but he does. He's got chrome parts on his arms and he transforms into a Mercedes sports car, as I said. And he is very cool. Good morning, Margaret. It's great to have you with us. Those are my buddies. They are here for me. But I know you like seeing them, so there they are. Our scripture reading today is in the description. Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. And uh, I have a joke while you are looking for... your scripture. All right. Questions. 
did Adam and Eve argue and what did they argue about? Answer. You've put my shirt in the salad again, Eve. Because they sewed leaves together for their clothes. Adam and Eve were the first bookkeepers. They invented the loose leaf system. Question. Why didn't Adam and Eve use calculators and computers? Answer. Because they, the Lord told them to multiply on the face of the earth. Those were pretty corny, but it's still pretty good. All right. Now, if you remember yesterday, Jesus, um, he had said something that upset the Pharisees. Right? And then the disciples told him what the Pharisees said. And now Jesus tells a parable about uh, the Pharisees themselves. People of God gather around and hear the word of the Lord. Our scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 14. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. This is the reading of God's holy word. May God bless the reading, hearing, and living of God's holy word as it becomes a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path in these dark days. Grace, mercy, and peace I bring to you from the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come and shall always be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the other kids are doing it! We all said to our parents at some point, and we probably had it said to us as parents, and we said it to our teachers, and the response was the same. If the other kids jumped off a cliff, or off the Brooklyn Bridge, or off the Golden Gate Bridge, jumped off whatever you came up with, <laughs> If they jumped off something really high, would you do it too? Well, you know, I was in the Airborne. We jumped out of airplanes, and my friends jumped out of, out of the airplane. And I jumped out of the airplane too. <laughs> anyway, in today's verse, Jesus talks about the dangers of following someone who thinks they can see where they are going, but they really can't. And they all fall into a dark pit. It's a dastardly outcome. It really is. Now, others may do this and that. But Jesus says we are responsible for our, for our own actions, our own decisions. And we are responsible for, for following who we follow. Our decisions are our own, whether we like it or not. But what about when it comes to following Jesus? We can't see where we are being led. We're blind. We don't know what is in the next pasture Jesus is taking us to. But even though we're blind, we remember that Jesus, Jesus is not. And as our hands clutch his cloak and other hands hold fast to us even, we don't need to see that it is our Savior whom we are following feeling, an intuition, and we call it faith. Because of that faith, we find our hope and our salvation, and that is why, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Jesus Christ, and we follow him to greener pastures. Amen. Good morning, Joni. It's great to have you with us. And I have jokes for us. In basic training, the drill sergeants, when we had some downtime, they'd say, Who's got jokes? Who's got jokes? And some of the comedians of our of our basic training class would get up and tell some jokes and do some impressions. Um, well, I got jokes. World Ruler, this is called. Pastor George and his wife Sally brought their new bundle of joy home to the parsonage. Days went by with Sally watching every move baby Georgie made, while George Sr. busied himself with heavy global and theological thoughts. 
Naturally, the care began to take its toll on Sally, causing her husband to gallantly announce, I know you're having a lot of trouble with Georgie, dear, but keep in mind, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Sally responded, How about taking over the world for a few hours while I go shopping? I resonate with that one because Angela and I lived in, in a parsonage when Cora was born. Good morning, Mikey. It's great to have you with us. This one's entitled, Mess. Parsonage son to his mother. I've decided that I want to be a preacher so that I can clean up the mess the world is in. That's just wonderful, purred his mother. You can start by going upstairs and cleaning your room. Yes, if we can't clean up our own lives, we're not going to do much cleaning up the world. This one's entitled, Answer. One evening, a wife drew her husband's attention to the couple next door. She took him out on the porch so he could see what they were doing. Pointing across the yard, she said, Do you see that couple, how devoted they are? He kisses her every time they meet. I noticed that he often brings home flowers or dinner. Why don't you do that? I would love to, replied the husband amiably and smoothly, but I don't know her well enough. A tramp knocked on the door of the inn known as the St. George and the Dragon. The landlady answered the door. The tramp said, Could you give a poor man something to eat? No, said the woman, slamming the door in his face. He knocked again and said, could I have a few words with George? Because he had already met the dragon. This one's entitled, But You Could Have. A husband and his wife were traveling and stopped at a very exclusive hotel to rest for a while. They slept for four hours, then decided to leave and travel on. When they checked out, the desk clerk handed them a bill for $350. The man exploded and demanded to know why the charge was so high. He demanded to see the manager. The manager appeared, listened to the man, and then explained that the hotel had an Olympic-sized pool and a huge conference room that was available for their use. But we didn't use them, protested the man. Well, they are here, and you could have, said the manager. He went on to explain that they could have taken in one of the shows for which the hotel was famous. But we didn't go to any shows. Well, we have them, and you could have, repeated the manager. No matter what facility the manager mentioned, the, the man replied, but we didn't use it. Eventually, the man realized he was going to have to pay, so he wrote a check. But, sir, this check is only for $100. That's right. I charged you for kissing my wife. But I didn't. Well, the man replied with a wry smile, she was here. And you could have. That is um, quite crafty. Hurt feelings. At the fair, Marge loved the Ferris wheel, but Fred didn't. So Marge went by herself. The wheel went round and round. Suddenly, there was an accident and the wife was thrown out. She landed in a heap at her husband's feet. He ran over and asked, Are you hurt? Of course I'm hurt. Tell me, is there anything broken? He he said. He asked anxiously. No, nothing's broken. Then how are you hurt? With tears in her eyes, she blurted, I went around three whole times, and you didn't wave to me once. A Tangled Web One evening, a man drove his secretary home after she had worked late at the office. Although this was an innocent gesture, he did not mention it to his wife because he knew her jealous nature. Later that night, the man and his wife were driving out to dinner. Suddenly, he noticed a high heel shoe half hidden under the passenger seat. Not wanting to be conspicuous, he waited until his wife was looking out her window before he scooped up the shoe and tossed it out of the car. With a sigh of relief, he pulled into the restaurant parking lot. That's when he noticed his wife squirming in her seat. Honey... Have you seen my other shoe? That guy is a little bit in trouble. 
There's no way out of that without telling his wife that he dropped off his secretary at home. Okay, I got two uh, two cartoons for us. One is a Christmas theme, but we can all use some a little Christmas in our lives. I'm not trying to start Christmas early, but we can all use Christmas in our lives at any time of the year. So, the first one, we have kids sitting and watching a Christmas play, or no, two women watching the Christmas play, and it's a variation of something we've heard before. One lady says to the other, gold, frankincense, myrrh. Why wouldn't the wise men bring diapers? We've heard that before, but it's well done, and it, it's, it's always funny. All right, over here, we have a businessman walking next to a business, and it says, Hoyt Group, gluttony, lust. Sloth, envy, pride, anger, and greed management. And yes, that's all seven deadly sins. But if they help you manage those things and not have them in your lives, then that's a good thing. All right, that's all I got for you. Thank you for joining me. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we know that we are blind. And we also know that at times we lead others who are blind and we don't rely on Jesus to lead us. Help us to know when we are not leading by following Jesus and be with us so that we may follow Jesus the greener pastures he has waiting for us. That is our hope and that is what we pray for. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for joining us. Keep healthy. Keep safe. Keep laughing. Don't forget to do one thing every day that brings you joy. I don't care what it is. Find it and do it. And Saturday we'll have a kid's message. Sunday we'll be having communion. Don't forget your bread. I will not forget my bread. Your juice, your wine, or your water. And I will be here 10.30 every morning for the foreseeable future. May God keep you in the stitches of laughter and love today, tomorrow, and into eternal life. Amen. God bless. I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow.